Hello and welcome to another episode of Breaking Maths, bringing you the student news every fortnight. This episode features the Love Foundation and the launch of My Maastricht. What's wrong with you? It's, it's, it's just a negative party. Okay, I think you need this. <laughs> uh, thank you. Good thing we're at Coffee Lovers. Ah, uh, I went to the Chicks at Nightclub party. But Florian, that was days ago. And where are your trousers? It was crazy. <laughs> And speaking of missing things, there's this new platform for students that makes sure you won't miss out on anything. It's called My Maastricht. Oh, I've actually been meaning to check that out. I'm having a lot of difficulties with my taxes. Let's have a look at it now. When I first came to Maastricht a year and a half ago, I had no idea where anything was, how things worked, or what you could do here. But after the launch of the web portal My Maastricht, it seems like no student will ever have this problem again. So what is My Maastricht? We talked to Neil Cowan, who was one of the six people behind the web portal. Could you tell us a bit about this initiative? Okay, so um, My Maastricht ONL is an uh, initiative from the students for students. Um, our project leader, Thomas, he actually works for the uni, he's a project manager. Um, we started work about eight months ago. Judging from the release party, My Maastricht is expected to be a success. The portal was welcomed into existence with live music performances and champagne at the Musik today. It's an orientation guide for international students in Maastricht that don't speak Dutch, um, where they can find information that is relevant to getting settled in Maastricht, which is the first part of the website, and the second part to actually going exploring in Maastricht. So, bars, restaurants, sports and activities, social media, and then the first part is the static content which covers everything from housing, transport, um, finances and then healthcare. And we pretty much cover everything. The information exists in Dutch, but it's hard to access that if you don't speak Dutch. So that's what we try to do with this project. We try to make information accessible, easily accessible for students and the idea is that this Orientation guide is the first place that students would look if they have any question rel you know, related to their life in Maastricht. That's the, that's the rough idea of the project. After only being online for two weeks, 
students have already used it to seek answers to their questions about weed, waste and bicycles. And look, we're on there too. You're watching Breaking Mass, watching Breaking Mass on My Maastricht. It's been a while since Adrian reported on something, but last week he went to the exhibition by the Love Foundation on the relationship between humankind and Mother Nature. And following that, there'll be some information on the upcoming Wii Festival. The Love Foundation. Usually they spread the love through parties with beer, fruits and good alana. But this weekend they uh, opened their first art exhibition. So let's see what love, art and clean water have to do with each other. Hi Oli. Hey Adrian, how are you going? <laughs> How's it going so far? Um, yeah, I mean, look, like it's been a lot of fun setting up this event, like today and yesterday, and I'm really happy with the way everything looks, and it's just so awesome to see like something that I've created, and just to see people interacting with it and like having a good time around. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. And can you tell me something about the, the overarching theme here? Okay, so the overarching theme is basically related to. Like humankind's uh, relationship with Mother Earth. So we've looked at this in a way that's not so much like it can be interpreted that you know the beautiful kind of relationship that they have with one another as in an appreciation for the environment and for um, everything natural, but then also obviously that this relationship is sometimes problematic. Also related to the cause behind the Love Foundation. Yeah, well, at the Love Foundation, we really believe in the in sustainability. We think that. Any mark we make, basically, should we should account for that in some way. The most fundamental thing that we can do is really to raise awareness about this. You know, when people know that they're doing something wrong to the earth, we really hope that that means they will try to fix that. And I think that's what we're trying to do with this exhibition. You know, we're trying to get people to open their eyes. Do you have a favorite uh, favorite piece of art here? Okay. Perhaps. Well, I have a little soft spot for one of the artists because she's a very close friend of mine. Um, this piece right here, which is The Wanderer by Grace Robertson. Thanks a lot. Thanks for, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for talking yeah. to me. Cheers. No problem. Hey guys, we're on our way to the Mandrel to check out the information session for volunteers uh, for the WE Festival. So let's go. What is the WE Festival? I don't know, like it kind of encompasses so much more than what you would expect it to, in a way. I mean, I can tell you what is the WE Festival, but that's such a subjective thing, you know, and everyone creates their own experience, and everyone who you will ask will kind of tell you, like, their own interpretation of what the WE Festival is, because it's so open to that malleability. Hello, David. So you're one of the people organizing the WE Festival. Uh, how do people, how can people volunteer? Um, I mean, volunteering can happen in, in a lot of ways, really. We, we have people just doing door shifts, bar shifts, uh, helping with setting up things. But yeah, we also look for new talent. That can happen in, in a multitude of ways. Um, literally, all I'm recommending is just give us a line, maybe come to one of our events that we're doing before the WE Festival as well, just talk to us in person and see if we can arrange anything. We're happy to give people a platform to express themselves in whatever way that might be. So we're here with two lovely volunteers for the WE Festival. Uh, so what are you guys actually going to do? Uh, we're currently rehearsing for a theatre production and it's going to be an adaption of Agatha Christie's The Mousetrap. And uh, we're hopefully going to perform that at the WE Festival, so we're really excited. I am actually representing Litter of Light this year. I am uh, in the board of uh, Litter of Light and uh, our idea is uh, just we of offer to uh, unprivileged countries uh, electrical solution. What makes it so special? I think what makes it really special is that it's all student run and that is just something that's just brilliant. And also just a wonderful mix of like we're us theatre and then music and then culture and a little bit of art. I hope that we have provided you with sufficient information to get you excited about the WE Festival. Uh, till next time. Bye. We all have exams in one or two weeks, but until then, there's plenty of time to procrastinate and check out the following events.
It's that time of the year again. On the 25th of March, the Green Office will start their courses on sustainability, and this will provide students with the possibility to create their own curricula and to really do research on topics they enjoy. Coke, speed, heroin, crack, PCP, alcohol. See how it affects your body at the debate on the 17th at 8. Oh, let's see what's the crack. It's St. Patrick's Day on Tuesday, and Inactus and ESN are organizing the Spark Day, and so you should drink till you're green at the Himal. Smooth jazz on the 21st of March at 7. Are we already at the end of the episode? We are, but if you can't get enough from Breaking Mass, we just launched a new blog and it's definitely worth a read. So, don't forget to check that out, like this episode, comment, subscribe, and share it with your friends. I guess it's time for me to put on some trousers. No, that's all right. I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>